Cardi B once said, broke boys don't deserve no <laughs> And for some reason, this quote, this line has been living in my mind, rent free, mortgage free, aluminum and paraben free, okay? Part of the reason is because the song itself is just really catchy, but the other reason is because I recently finished a book titled why Women Have Better Sex Under Socialism by Kirsten R. Godsey. And between that book and Cardi's lyric clanking around in my brain, I just thought I'd like to tell y'all about it because there's a lot to dig into in this uh, thought battle cry, <laughs> so to speak. Now one could look at a line like that in a rap lyric and easily dismiss it as the perspective of a gold digger. In fact, a lot of people do. But on the other hand, some folks look at a line like that and see it as empowering. If sex is a commodity, then I may as well be getting paid for it. Hence my calling it a thought battle cry. I wasn't trying to be rude. I actually think that's kind of fun. <laughs> Both perspectives are interesting to me as they address how capitalism has warped our perception of love, intimacy, and sex in general, but only on the surface. Because if you peel back the layers, if you add a little bit of history and a dash of skepticism, there's a lot to unpack here. So that's what we're gonna do today. And as a challenge to myself, I am going to try to do this in 10 minutes or less. We'll see. So, bonjour, nakam, hi. My name is Khadija, fam jam. You already know what to do, but if you're new, feel free to take a look around, suss out the vibe, I sit on my floor and just talk about whatever I want. And if that sounds good to you, then uh, keep watching. Now, Cardi B is not the first female rapper to let the boys know that they have to have a certain level of income to even breathe in her direction. This seems to have been a motif that developed in hip hop in the mid 90s and the early 2000s when the genre was really getting that money. I've talked about it in previous videos before. Card. <laughs> this was also a time when more sexually explicit female rappers were gaining attention. I'm thinking about Lil' Kim and Trina as a couple of examples. Who's bad? Who's bad? Who, who's bad? I'm the baddest bitch. Mm. These women leaned on their lyrical skills, beauty, and sex appeal to drive home the age-old adage that Cardi B would later succinctly rap broke boys don't deserve no. no. But why is it even necessary to say something like that? Why were all these fem C so clear about the fact that you could not and cannot be poor to engage with them in any sort of romantic or sexual matter? Manner, manner. Was this a way to reclaim some sort of power and agency? If women can control sex, then they can control the economy? Or was it just feeding into capitalism's sneaky little seductive sticky hands? According to Godsey, German sociologists August Babel and Frederick Engels argue that back in the day, primitive hunter-gatherers lived in communal matriarchies. I promise this will apply, just follow me. Babel and Engels argue that because of this method of conception, lineage was often traced through the mother. One mom, multiple male partners and whatnot. And this led women to having, quote, an equal if not greater share in decision making. But Babel and Engels argue that with the quote, advent of agriculture and private property, wealth became that girl. Ooh, the sun's going down so I don't have to be squinting so much. Okay, let's just try this. It'll come back up. Just bask in it. Just bask in it, okay? Carol bask in it, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> See, hunter-gatherers didn't hoard resources. But as land ownership became the new beat, all the girls, the men, were beginning to acquire large amounts of land. If you have a large piece of land, you need laborers to work it. Those laborers help you create a surplus of product that you can sell to others who don't have, can't get, or aren't allowed to have land. Then you get even more money. Now that you've acquired all this land, laborers, and resources, you're thinking, hmm, why well, I gotta share this with everybody else? It's my land. What to do, what to do? Ew. According to Babel and Engels, once landowners begin accumulating private fortunes, this class of men desire to pass their wealth on to legitimate heirs. This precipitated the invention of monogamous marriage and the enforced fidelity of the wife. AKA once men started acquiring land, laborers, and resources, and therefore more wealth, they were able to put in place a new set of rules. One that favored wealthy male landowners, later wealthy racialized as white male landowners, over everybody else. The overthrow of the mother right was the world historical defeat of the female sex. The man took command in the home also. The woman was degraded and reduced to servitude. She became the slave of his lust and a mere instrument for the production of children. That's Frederick Engels in like the late 1800s. That's a pretty, that's a pretty radical perspective, young man. Was he young? So then we get back to Cardi B. <laughs> I bet you never listen. My sociology <laughs> people are like, wait, what? 
it applies. Okay. Getting back to Cardi B though, if we believe Babel and Angle's theory, and I want to reiterate, it is a theory, Cardi B's lyrics are the inevitable conclusion of such a system gone awry, to the point that it is now openly embraced by some women as a way to reclaim some sort of power and agency. If you can't beat them, deny the broke one sex. <laughs> All jokes aside, this perspective is lacking to say the least. One, this seems like an argument incels make about why men can't get any girls. Being wealthy, hot, having clout is today's equivalent of being a land owning, wealthy, racialized as white man, in my eyes. As a result, some of the men that don't fit into any of those categories go online to vent their frustrations and instead of attacking the system or critiquing it in a meaningful way, they attack women trying to survive the system just like they are. Two, under this perspective of broke boys don't deserve no kitty and everything we've talked about prior to this, it reduces a woman's value to her sexual capabilities. It feeds right into the notion that women's bodies are a site of sexual conquest, domestic labor, and the means through which a new labor force is created, i.e having babies. From this vantage point, there's this unspoken agreement that if my body is going to be the only source of value to this system, I may as well take advantage of it. And I completely get that. It's just something I would advise those of you that have the privilege and option to not participate in, to just kind of think a little bit more critically about. Because, point number three, if you're a Cardi B, a woman of a certain class that's been on both sides of the economic fence, a woman who knows all too well the sometimes transactional nature of sex under capitalism, then you have to know that just because you tell broke boys they don't deserve no <coughs> doesn't mean that every random woman walking down the street has that right. It can also be dangerous as any woman femme that has ever walked down the street can tell you. <laughs> I mean, I've been called out of my name for not smiling back or saying hi. Imagine what would happen to me if I looked at some dude who was like, hey girl, can I get a smile? And was like, broke boys don't deserve no. Unlike a Medea movie, I wouldn't have a bunch of girls rob me being like, I know that's right. I might get murked. Like, <laughs> the data says that's probably not gonna go well for me. And if that sounds bad, just imagine how women and femmes who fall out of the label of cis women and are visibly or visibly present that way, how they're impacted. Cis women get a cold, trans women are killed by the flu. If it wasn't clear the point I'm trying to drive home in this video, capitalism bad, for <laughs> the many reasons, but specifically this time for our relationships, intimacy, and of course, it's bad for sex. For those of you that you know, enjoy sex. The woman of the future society is socially and economically independent. She is no longer subjected to even a vestige of domination or exploitation. She is free and on a par with man and mistress of her destiny. In choosing the subject of her love, woman, like man, is free and unhampered. She woos or is wooed and enters into a union from no considerations other than her own inclinations. What I shall eat, how I shall sleep and dress is my own affair and is also my intercourse with a person of the opposite sex or same sex or whatever, get freaky, it's the roaring 20s. Okay, let's get into the final thoughts. <laughs> This is a fun little chat. Recording it has taken me about 20 something minutes, so I think I can get it down to 10. I'm really hoping I can. Um, this, again, was not to try to ruin any of y'all's favorite jam. Y'all can still be in the club, thotting and bopping, shaking their ass, because I, I will. I surely will be, but. <laughs> There has to be, I think, an element of skepticism and criticism when it comes to this sort of stuff because the way it manifests, I think the best and, and more colloquially so people can kind of see the real ramifications of this stuff is through pop culture. And this song is an example of that. It's only one little line. It's a throwaway. It probably doesn't even mean much to a lot of people that are just listening to it for fun. But my sociology ass was like, broke boys don't deserve, oh wow, what does this mean? <laughs> Also, I want to reiterate, or not reiterate, but mention this book again, Why Women Have Better Sex Under Socialism. It's it's a good title and that's why I picked it for this because she's not the first person that's ever spoken about this, about how uh, domestic labor isn't rewarded in the same way. Um, I mean, listen, if you read Angela Davis, you already know. If you read any black feminist, you already know. <laughs> but yes, 
Um, so I definitely recommend some more Angela Davis and whoa, this book. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that I had like highlighted and exclamation points and I'm like writing all up in the margins like what the fuck? At one point it just says so anarchy. <laughs> But it's a really interesting examination of not just why capitalism bad for sex, but it goes through a lot of research, it goes through a lot of history, a lot of theory, and it also talks about just, you know, like, men feel, and this is a very straight men and women dating thing, but if men feel like they're paying for a woman, paying for sex and intimacy in some way, shape, or form, whether that's they have to pay for the date or they have to pay for uh, this or they have to be the one to initiate, blah, 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 What makes you think that they're gonna then care as much about their pleasure? And the reason that I've also been thinking about this is because I listened to a really great episode of uh, the podcast, Lovers and Friends, where they're talking about <laughs> why are straight men bad at sex? I, that, I can't remember if that was a full title, but that was, it was a really interesting conversation. Mostly straight men talking, uh, mostly black straight men talking about how men don't really have as much sexual liberation and freedom to explore and have fun and women are kind of leaving them behind and stuff. And this book, I don't know, it kind of teeters into that of like when women, when femmes, when we have, when the group that was subjugated, let's say, has uh, more economic freedom and independence and, or there are social programs to, and safety nets to protect people and they're less worried about the financial strains of, of simply existing. What does that do? Not just for intimate relationships, interactions, whatever, but for, for sex, for that kind of intimacy. What is that? I think that's, oh man, I love talking about this shit. Okay, anyway, sorry, we need to, we need to go because this has to be short. Um, feed your plets, water your plets, and remember that you can always change your mind if you have the space and capability to, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. Oh, I forgot to add, we're doing a bit of merch. Hi, so if you wanna check out some of my merch stuff, well, the Instagram doesn't have anything uploaded yet, but the prototypes are in, they're looking real cute, girl. Ah, check out my Instagram, it's gonna be Let's Flaunt. I'll show you, this is a prototype that we had to toss because it wasn't centered, but this is like a little tote bag situation. Not tote bag. <laughs> this is one of the bags that we're putting the pins in. Um, so you can get kind of the vibe of what, what we're going for here. And obviously you can use it for other things. I have a bunch of chargers in here. <laughs> but yeah, follow the Let's Flaunt Instagram and follow me on Instagram if you're feeling so inclined. You know, I, I, just, I just be on there. But anyway, bye.